Well, brother Chris, there's a lot going on in the world right now. There is. Yeah, yeah. we've got uh, we've got the war in Ukraine. We've got Supreme Court uh, drafts being leaked, and so I think we got to talk about aliens. Okay. <laughs> aliens. <laughs> So, it's been just roughly a year, next, mu- next month will be a year, when the Office and Director of National Intelligence was required to give a statement before the U.S. Congress uh, on their preliminary assessment of what they refer to as unidentified aerial phenomenon, or UFOs. So, UFOs are, have always been a big thing, at least in the last 30, 40 years. Oh, big thing for me. Uh, big thing for Justin. Love aliens. I love <laughs> and so... Aliens. Uh, I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you begin because we want to actually talk about some of the theological things and then um, we hope at later times to discuss some of the specific incidents. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. today we're sticking with theology and okay. what do Catholics say about aliens? So I wish I could say that I was an objective researcher <laughs> when it comes to this, but Brother Chris, I must confess, I want aliens to be real so bad, <laughs> <laughs> so bad that it's hard for me to be skeptical. Okay. Okay. That being said, we shall proceed. We first need to define what we mean by alien mm-hmm. uh, for the for you know the sake of this discussion, because you know like um, I think that if you're to to make it too broad a definition and it's just any life out there in the known universe, I don't know. That's not as interesting to me because that involves like microbial life mm-hmm. and you know. Um, like animal life. Right. I don't think we'd be nearly as impressed if we found like a space cow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as we would be if we found, if like we made contact with a sentient, intelligent being, you know, that had free will, you know, right. and could deliberate things and use reason. So, for the sake of our discussion, we're going to define alien um, as such. Essentially, an alien is a a quote human that does not reside on earth okay they're they're sentient beings they're intelligent they possess free will they're rational animals that just happen to not be from this planet Mm -hmm. they might not look like us at all right they uh they might not speak like us or move like us or anything like us right but what makes them the quote human of space is that they have that rational soul that's what makes us human, um, to borrow that from Aristotle and, and Aquinas. So that's how we're defining alien. For, well, what yeah. about people who would question, like, because in their mind they're still thinking like a human being that just looks different. So mm-hmm. how how would you just dis- like you to answer them? Like, because some people might just get tripped up on the fact that you're using the term human in any way here. But you're really just yeah. focusing that they have yeah. to have free will. They I, have to have the same free will and intelligence. I'm focusing as us, on the, the faculties and qualities of the okay. soul. Yeah. So this could be uh, a creature that looks like an ape, or looks like the little green men, or the little gray men. I guess from like the X Files. Yep. Fantastic show up until <laughs> season five. One of my favorites. Um, so these could be little little gray men or whatever. But the way that they look doesn't matter so much. When I say human i mean that they are like humanoid they have a soul that is able to use reason um they're intelligent they have free will so that's what we mean by alien okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so but so you're inferring that though you don't know like not that we know but like quinn (laughs) i'm sorry Well, well that's what he mentioned he said you know there might be life out there but that's not yeah. what is exciting as something yeah. that would be intelligent, yeah. a free will, sort of similar characteristics to us. Sister Quinn, we don't know <laughs> for sure whether or not aliens, as we have so defined them, yeah. basically like the Star Wars creatures, right? Mm-hmm. Where they can talk and use reason and they can fail and do something morally wrong mm-hmm. or they can triumph and do something morally just. Um yeah, we don't know if those really exist. We really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how we're defining them because I think that's what... Right, because you're saying it's exciting. Earthlings have been obsessed with ever since Roswell, you know? Okay. Little little gray men that are... I mean, and that's even what we call them, little gray men, Yeah. right? So, <laughs> anyway. 
Okay. So what's the controversy? Okay, controversy. <laughs> Why is this controversial from a Catholic perspective? Because that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to address the Catholic perspective of the existence of aliens tonight. That's what we're doing. Okay. So in a nutshell, this is the controversy. So I, I'm, I'm listing this out sort of like as a logical sequence. So point A, the word became flesh for the salvation of humanity. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. Mm -hmm. The fittingness of the incarnation is especially evident from a covenantal lens, right? In short, Adam screwed up his priesthood and lost everlasting life. The word became flesh to offer the, pra the, the, the precise self-sacrifice that Adam failed to offer. So why did the word become flesh? Because like redeems like. From a covenantal lens, we can sum it up as like redeems like, flesh must redeem flesh, fallen flesh must be redeemed by, by an unfallen flesh, right? So um, presumably, this is point B, presumably aliens have biological ancestral lines that are completely distinct from Earth humans. Right? So no Battlestar Galactica. No Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> the <13th> Maybe. <laughs> we don't know. But we're going to assume no Battlestar Galactica. That's not reality. If it is, then are you a Cylon? Yeah. Or Atlantis. <laughs> Maybe or, they were Atlanteans and they don't exist here anymore. But super advanced. Is now, that I'm Graham going, Hancock stuff? I don't know. I don't oh, know. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going off the cuff here at this point. <laughs> I'm going to take my hat off because my bald head is burning alive underneath okay. this thing. <laughs> I'm like a baked potato under here. Um, so, presumably aliens have biological ancestral lines that are completely distinct from ours, right? right so they, like, our tree is planted on a planet completely different from their tree, and there's no... Um, right, no mixture. Yeah, no mixture. Okay, point C. Presumably aliens being free creatures and subject to the gradation of perfection that all creation falls under, Right. So that, that's important um, Explain to Explain that too, what, so, what that would mean for Thomas, people who don't know yeah, what that is. Uh, from from the, the great philosophical tradition, from Aristotle to Aquinas, you have this notion of the gradation of perfection. There's only one perfect being, right. and that's God. And the highest that any, um, any creature with human freedom can get would be like the Virgin Mary, who was immaculate but not impeccable, right? Right. The possibility to do something wrong is always there. Now, because aliens, presumably having free will, they still fall under the, the order of the gradation of perfection. Some things are more perfect than others mm -hmm. um, through all sorts of different um, faculties of life. Right. And that connects to the whole idea of the hierarchy of life and the hierarchy of everything. The hierarchy exactly. of the church, hierarchy of the angels, hierarchy of exactly. all. Yeah. Exactly. Why did some angels fall and some didn't? Right. Some mm -hmm. were less perfect at discerning the ends of the plan that they were shown at the beginning of time mm -hmm. right so aliens would fall under the same order they wouldn't be perfect so presumably any creature that has free will and can reason won't use their free will or their reason perfectly right which means that they they will fall at some point they will disappoint um the moral order and fall short so basically aliens could not be impeccable therefore they would need a savior, right. a capital S savior. Like we humans look to Jesus Christ as our savior who saved us from death and our sins. Presumably the aliens would need something of that, of that nature as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, D, but it seems incompatible with covenantal theology for Jesus Christ to be the savior of the aliens. Since like redeems like, there would need to be a divine alien incarnation that acts as the savior of, of the aliens. But this seems absurd on its face and anti-scriptural for Jesus Christ, the divine human, must be the only begotten son of God, right? That's in the creed mm -hmm. and that's in the great tradition of the church. Furthermore, it seems to create all sorts of issues with tradition, with magisterial proclamations and teachings to suggest that the word in addition to assuming a human nature also assumed an alien nature to be an alien savior right wouldn't you just say that god would have redeemed them just the same way he kind of redeems nature in a sense then so that is 
one of the things that we're going to talk about because I think yes you know um, Jesus Christ redeems all of nature and then as as we saw in um, is it Laudato Si? all of nature mm-hmm. will be brought forth to bear um, in the glory of God like could it be something like that uh-huh. I don't know because we read uh, or no is it Amoris Laetitia where, where Pope Francis says that no it's Laudato Si Laudato Si yeah so when we read that, we typically think, oh, yeah, well, the animals and, um, you know, brute creatures that don't have free will, per se, right, uh, in the way that we understand it, they'll be brought forth to bear and be recalled out of their dormition to be in the new creation. But we're defining aliens as essentially another type of human. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Right. When we get there, we can talk. Because right, I have a question yeah. too, but I'm going to wait till we get okay. to that part that okay. I think I might. So, A, B, C, and D lead us to E, which is if aliens exist, it follows from all, the abo- all of the above that either, one, aliens are essentially otherworldly humans that were created purely for desolation, right? Knowing only natural happiness, not supernatural happiness, which seems cruel and arbitrary and kind of uncharacteristic of the god of the gospels that we are familiar with right Mm -hmm. you make a creature that has an immortal soul and because it's a rational soul it's immortal it has free will and um then you don't save them from their fallenness you know so that seems incompatible with our notion of theology and then or two so that's the first thing that could be true too it follows that maybe the existence of aliens as we have defined them is totally incompatible with the theology of the church therefore if they exist the theology of the church is fiction and that's why we're interested in talking about aliens Mm -hmm. it's because it is a very popular um view amongst i would say probably the the new atheist movement the the scientism movement Mm -hmm. right yeah that um life intelligent sentient life outside of um of our known sphere of this world exists somewhere in in the universe Mm -hmm. and because it does therefore god doesn't exist right yeah our whole our whole or or our whole theology our whole mythos our christian mythos if you will right is fake yeah and a lot of times it is connected with some kind of messianism type Mm -hmm. idea that the aliens are going to come and free us of our of our sins, our problems, make us sort of perfect like they are in theory, you know, and such. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the that's the controversy. Um, so moving on from there, we have to ask the question, is it even possible for aliens to exist? And it's like, of course, it's possible. Yeah. Um, there are planets as plentiful as the stars that we've discovered. Presumably, you'd find one that could house life on it um and so yeah it's absolutely it's possible is it probable that's another question but it's certainly possible yeah yeah and i know the physicist drake there's the famous drake equation people can google that but he came up sort of with the knowledge at this point we have the universe and how large it is and how many planets presumably there kind of are roughly Mm -hmm. he came up with the equation of the number of planets that could support our type of of technology or higher right uh and then you have the fermi paradox though who says if the we're our our particular universe galaxy has only been 4.5 billion years old the whole galaxy is like 13.7 so he goes the opposite end and says well no because anything that would have evolved had all that time to do so but yeah in the end it's i mean it possible i mean yeah yeah it, it is possible yeah, it's possible so. and also not even from the statistical standpoint you got to say that all things of that nature like just creation itself obviously mm-hmm. the creator has power to right. do that and as franciscans um, you know we i mean god is the fountain flowing right he's yeah. constantly exploding forth in love and creating things yeah. i mean god loves to create yeah. stuff so you know <laughs> and there's also the question of whether or not the universe is finite or infinite mm-hmm. now if it's infinite it's a statistical certainty right that there is other life out there that's like us that's intelligent um you know the tradition that we operate under 
largely favors the finite universe um, model. Right. But, yeah. So, as much as I want to say that it's a statistical certainty that Darth Vader is real, (laughs) he's not. (laughs) Or it's not a statistical certainty, as far as we know. Um, Okay, so here's the question. How might the second person of the Trinity fit into the picture then if aliens do exist, right? Because the controversy is that it doesn't seem like he fits into this nicely. Yeah. You know? So, of all people, Thomas Aquinas, the great universal doctor himself, (laughs) in Summa Theologiae, um, part three, question three, article seven, in his response to the questions, he actually addresses the notion of whether a divine person can assume more than one human nature. Hmm. And the answer is yes. Right. Um, yeah. One of the underlying reasons that he gives is that because the human nature is finite, finite right. yeah, it can't infinite. comprehend the infinity of the infiniteness right. of the divine nature and so of the divine essence. Right. And so, of course, it would not be... Um, it wouldn't diminish the lordship or the the dignity of the divine person to assume more than one human nature right to it and i mean you know even if our idea is franciscans and the the hachiatas the perfect uniqueness of every single one of us in a sense on a different scale because this created level versus the infinite but all of us have something that we image god and yet the whole human race itself does still doesn't fully image him or ever could yeah. because of things. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And yeah so. Well we have like the notion like St. Clair's mirror, right? right? It's a it's a it's a hazy reflection of like we're a we're like a hazy mirror reflection of the Lord. Um and that's how we're the image of him. We we can't we can't like yeah. really portray everything of him. Right. Um and in the um, way that he his your relationship with each of us is absolutely unique. Because being infinite, he can love us all particularly. Mm-hmm. So it's just mm-hmm. another step to say, of course, he can also yeah. literally become yeah. millions of human beings. Okay. <laughs> so if Thomas Aquinas is right, and I'm inclined to say that he is, because he usually is. Not always. <laughs> not always, Dominicans. But 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 oftentimes he is. Um, so let's assume he's right. Well, aliens, as we have defined them, basically have a human nature. Right, a rational soul. They're rational animals that that probably look different from us. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, probably completely, in terms of species, totally different in the in the biological sense. But in the soul sense, they have something. Um, we have something in common with them. Well, so then, if Thomas Aquinas is right, the Word of God could assume this nature. Um, but then, could this nature become an alien savior? Is the question. Well, according to Colossians 1, 18, 20, it seems that the answer is no. Mm-hmm. Because to quote Colossians 1, quote, And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And this is, in reference, because it's the blood of his cross, is in reference to Jesus Christ, that human nature, right. not some other alien human nature. Jesus Christ and his cross is the redeemer of all things, whether on earth or in heaven. Yeah, and in so, and through his humanity. Yeah. yeah because that's what Bonaventure says, too, is he said Christ couldn't have taken an angelic nature, not in the sense that he couldn't by power, mm-hmm. but that wouldn't. Like you mentioned earlier, the like conquers like. But there's something more than that. It's almost like the human person alone um, possesses within themselves insofar as we understand everything. So like yeah. everything, yeah. soul, body, spirit, we're part of this material world. We're part of the transcendent world. And so we, because we connect everything on every level, in a sense, we're the, we are the mediators of heaven and earth. And we failed in that. But now the perfect mediator comes in humanity to kind of restore that whole, that whole thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. But. so if aliens are in need of redemption, it has to be the, the earthling Jesus Christ that is their redeemer, right? Right. So, in light of this, you know, how how do we really move forward? 
with if aliens exist, what does that mean for them? How does Christ fit into that? Mm -hmm. um, so here's some solutions. One, maybe the sin of Adam was somehow inclusive of non-Earth human human natures. Adam was a priestly arbiter for other humans, presumably in Genesis, if you take a very historical read mm -hmm. of Genesis. After all, Adam and Eve, they sin in the garden, then they leave the garden, and then they, they run into other humans, right? Mm -hmm. So Adam sins somehow... He is portrayed as priest in Genesis, so maybe Adam's sin, the way that it kind of covers all of humanity that right. was around at the time, um, also covers all of all of you know. And it makes sense because every other covenant mediator afterwards follows the same pattern. Yeah. Moses still stands for all the other people. Um, he didn't have to exist before them or anything, yeah. and Abraham, all that, you know, so that pattern. Yeah, and we looked up the Greek just before we started filming for Romans 5, for just the sin entered the world through one man, right? Um, that's that's how the, the verse begins. Um, sin entered the world through one man. That's the English translation, but we just looked it up in the Greek, right, the SBL Greek, and, and the word used for world is cosmos, so just as sin entered the cosmos through one man, very interesting. Yeah. So maybe Adam's sin did pertain to the rest of the cosmos in some priestly arbitration sort of way, mm -hmm. and the redemption that Christ brings to the covenant with Adam somehow covers everybody. Right. You know. Um, two, maybe what we define to be aliens actually did originate on Earth and are directly related to us. I mean. Stargate, Atlantis. you know, <laughs> <laughs> we've lost half the audience. Yeah. Like, these guys are wearing brown robes and tinfoil hats, <laughs> talking about the lost city of Atlantis, right? Now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what if? Uh, yeah, we could take all sorts of weird speculations mm -hmm. on what Noah's Ark was, and you know, and who knows? Who knows? Maybe there is some sort of actual ancient connection between us and the aliens and so there is that biological like anthropological covenantal co connection that we have with them so the sin of adam has a very direct relationship to them you yeah. know not a, not like a, a legal effect but an actual like anthropological effect right. and not to go too far either but you know um in kabbalah tradition which Christian or Franciscanism really held closely to, although it wasn't Kabbalah, they kind of grew up in the same milieu. God created multiple worlds and destroyed them until this one, and mm -hmm. he finally was pleased with it. But interesting, who knows how long those other worlds existed? Did they exist billions of years yeah. that things could have traveled? You know, yeah, so yeah. I don't want to go too far afield. But <laughs> so. well, the, the last thing, I think this is a lot, yeah. So the third thing is... Maybe the nature of the alien fall was drastically different from the nature of Earth humanity's fall, mm -hmm. right? So we're looking at, uh, we're imputing upon beings that we've never met and know nothing about, right, that could possibly exist, uh, a fall that is akin to our fall, but we don't know, like, what was the covenant promise that was made that was broken right. with them? We have no idea, so... Been expelled so far that that's why they haven't come back yet, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I like where Quinn's going with this. Yeah. Were we were connected, <laughs> and they were cast. The Earth was the garden, yeah. and they were cast out. Yeah, you should write books, Quinn. <laughs> write some, write some novels. Um, okay, so, but if the nature of their fall was drastically different from ours, then maybe that affects the nature of how they're redeemed too. Right. You know, like maybe they just need yeah. an external. And, and then I was thinking, we don't have time to dig into today, but things to maybe look at mm -hmm. in some other time are. One, like, how's the Holy Spirit involved? Maybe the Holy Spirit works to bring them into the communion with Christ, but not necessarily in the same way that we know it as the human Jesus, but just to bring them into communion, I guess, with the yeah. eternal word. You know, that's the thing, too, is maybe he operates as the eternal word, still saving them in some other view out there, um, which is still salvation through the second person of the Trinity. But, mm -hmm. but still, the blood of the cross thing is something that kind of... I know. It kind of sticks it that we have to sort of... I know. But, um, um, well, the last thing is that maybe, you know, their redemption is, is tied in with um, a time thing. Like maybe the end of time and the second coming of Christ is, mm -hmm. is how they're redeemed, you know? And, and we just don't know um, if they, they exist and if they are fallen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll just end with Brother Chris. Do you, do you think that aliens exist? I don't know. I go back and forth. It's hard for me. 
aliens as we have defined them. Oh. Gray men with rational souls. <laughs> I'll say I lean towards yes, but just a little bit over. I don't know. I'm right in the middle. I kind of right go back and forth a lot. There's so been basically, a lot. yeah, we agnostic. can talk about that in another time. Agnostic, yeah. don't you know? It would be cool if they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool if they do. I don't really know. We're probably never going to yeah. meet them. Well, we can address that when you talk about yeah. incidents. Okay, I'll, I'll mention what some of the things I think. But do yeah. I think aliens are real? Wait, well, I know what you think. <laughs> I want well, so I want them to be real. Do I actually believe that they're real? I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Me too. I'm say I don't know, but the truth is out there. <laughs> okay. So that's well, it for tonight. Shall we end it? As Albus Dumbledore once said, may the force be with you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>